Hey everybody, welcome to Brad's Gadgets. Today I'm going to review the Oculus Quest 2 VR headset. Time for one final lesson. Oh my god, that felt so real. Well, welcome to Brad's Gadgets. In this video, I'm going to show you the hardware and software, as well as point out the pros and cons of the Oculus Quest 2 virtual reality headset. Now, in no way is this a sponsored review. I purchased this unit with my own money, and after two months of daily use, I'd like to pass on what I've learned about this whole VR system experience to you. Now, at first I was skeptical about the latest, greatest VR craze as I didn't think the technology was up to par. Then my best friend of over 30 years took the plunge and got me to try his. And let me tell you, I was amazed at how far the VR realm has come. Within three days, I had my headset delivered. But enough of my banter about why I dove into all of this, and let me tell you the information that you came here looking for. Now let's start off with the hardware. There are two versions, a 64 gig headset with controllers and a 256 gig headset with controllers as well. Other than the internal storage space, there's no difference between these two headsets. The 64 gigabyte version is $299 US or $399 Canadian. And the 256 gig version is $399 US or $549 Canadian at the time of filming this video. Now, do you need to buy a 256 gigabyte version? The short answer, in my opinion, is not really. Many of the games are less than three gigs each. So even on a 64 gig system, you have approximately 50 gigs of storage when you minus the operating system. And that will store a lot more games than you think. This is the 256 gigabyte version, as I did not know this information when I bought mine, and I thought I'd probably need the space. You figure the VR games would be massive in size, but they really aren't. So what do you get for your money hardware wise? Inside the box is a headset, a facial spacer, so you can wear your prescription glasses, the left and right controllers with AA batteries for each, a USB cable and power block for charging. Everything you need to get up and going right away. Now, this is a total standalone headset for you to explore the realm of virtual reality. You don't need a supercomputer to tether to. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection and need a valid Facebook account in order to access the software and connect to the VR network. Yes, you do need to have a Facebook account as Oculus is owned by Facebook. Now this shouldn't be an issue for many people, but that's a whole nother debate I'm not going to get into into this review. Also, if you use Steam or want to connect your headset to your computer to play those games, there's an optional cable you can buy that will enable you to do so. On the headset portion, the default head strap has worked fine for me for the past two months, but you can upgrade and get a more comfortable strap from Oculus themselves or third party vendors. Now, wearing this for two hours doesn't seem to be much of a bother for me, but I'll review the Elite head strap in an upcoming video. The eyepiece is comfortable and blocks out most of the light, but you can see out down towards your nose, which can be a blessing or a curse. I personally like this so I can see at a glance if I'm trying to reach for a drink in the real world while I'm playing. Alternatively, tapping twice on the side of your headset does enable a pass-through mode, so you can see your surroundings if you need to for any reason, and it also pauses your game. The controllers are robust yet comfortable to grip and even have wrist straps on them so you don't accidentally fling a controller if you happen to lose your grip. When we first log into the Oculus, you're confronted with the Guardian menu right away. This is where you can set your motion boundaries or even have a stationary boundary if you're seated. 
This is so you don't accidentally walk too close to the stairs or get too close to anything in the room that you could possibly damage. If you come close to your boundaries, you'll start to see a grid show up, indicating you're about to go out of bounds. Now, once you have that guardian boundary set and confirmed, you arrive at your home environment, which you can change to many different options, but the main menu layout is always the same. Now, let's get into the software side of things. So here's the main menu layout. From here, you can browse the store, watch videos on YouTube VR, which until I got this headset, I didn't even know existed. Amazon Prime has an app where you can watch your favorite Prime videos, if you have Prime, just like you were sitting in an IMAX theater. It really puts a twist on the whole watching TV experience being fully immersed in a whole different reality. There are documentaries and VR experiences, such as gliding down the mountain in a wingsuit, riding a weather balloon to the edge of the atmosphere, or trying out a roller coaster from Canada's Wonderland. Among many other things, it really transports you to a whole different experience that's hard to put into any other word but immersive. On the gaming side of VR, there are many free games to play, but the pay games are pretty reasonable for what you get. I find that, that the most expensive of those games tend to be about half the price of an Xbox or PlayStation game, with many more being even cheaper. For such a fully immersive experience, it's not bad of a deal at all. There are settings within the VR to calm any motion sickness, but for myself, I find I haven't had to change any of those yet. There was a couple times I had to close my eyes on a few roller coasters though. The sound is incredible too. For not wearing any headphones, I can hear 360 degrees around me and can pinpoint a helicopter flying around without even seeing it. It has built-in speakers that deliver cinematic 3D positional audio. It's not all action games though. You can relax by doing some fishing in a boat on a shore with real VR fishing. Ooh, I've tagged into a big one here. And it's a catfish. Still, it was fun. If fishing's not your thing. Angry Birds VR. You can shoot birds from different angles. This one's a lot of fun. <laughs> or even an epic roller coaster. You get the heart pumping. Hey, buddy. You fool. You forgot to tell them that Oculus offers a money-back guarantee on games as long as you don't play them for more than two hours and in less than 14 days of purchase, in case you have motion sickness of any type. Yes, that's correct. You can also cast directly to a compatible TV or via the Oculus mobile app on your phone or tablet, or even record it to your PC when connected with a USB cable and you can live stream your game directly to your Facebook feed. So I've pretty much covered the pros on this without trying to sound like an advertisement for the system. Let's take a look at some of the cons. Now, I've tried to be very critical in my thinking about the cons, and I found very few. You really get a lot of technology for your money for the price of these units. While the default head strap does do the job, the more comfortable elite head strap is going to run you somewhere around $49 US or $69 Canadian. The only downside I find with the default head strap is that when I go to tighten it on my head, 
it pulls little hairs on the head, back of my head a little bit. And I find it's just not that easy to adjust either. Many times I've over tightened by mistake. Battery life in the headset is only about two hours, which may seem like a long time, but in the virtual reality world, it can kind of go by quickly. While you can buy additional battery packs that strap onto the head strap itself, I think it would be better to be able to plug into the wall if you wanted to, which I've done, but the documentation on the headset says to avoid doing this. Now it takes about two and a half hours to achieve a full charge in the headset while it's turned off. The AA batteries, one per controller, seem to last about a month of daily use and can be replaced with your favorite brand. The included eyepiece is made out of foam and can collect sweat over time. It's not easy to clean, but there are different third-party brands you can buy that block out any absorption of sweat or light and are much easier to clean. Again, this is gonna set you back a few bucks depending on what you buy. Some of the games can cause motion sickness, but luckily the developers have realized this and offered either a reduced motion setting in the game itself or create look points to focus on until any symptoms pass. So in conclusion, I honestly have to say that this unit was worth every penny I paid for it, with the exception of the additional storage I have. If I had to buy it again, I'd definitely buy the 64 gigabyte version. I just don't find any value in the extra $150 I paid for the additional 192 gigs I have in this headset. And if that's the worst thing I have to tell you about this unit, then that's not too bad at all. Hopefully my experience in this whole virtual reality realm has given you some insight as to whether or not the Oculus Quest 2 headset system is right for you. If it is right for you, I'll see you on the virtual battlefield. And if it isn't right for you, hopefully I just helped you avoid a costly mistake. If you found this information helpful in any way, forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And as always, we'll catch you next time. Now I'll leave you with some actual footage of gameplay from Population 1, a battle royale style of first person shooter that puts you into the heart of the battle. Thanks for watching everybody. Across the street. Ah. I got Puffy the Bong Slayer, or whatever the fuck his name was.